from the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania. It's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. It was the big do-over for the botched election in parts of the Hazleton School District, but did it change the results? Counting the special election votes. Our top story on News 13 for this Wednesday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. The unofficial votes for the special primary election for Greater Hazelton School Board are in, but not everybody's happy with the do-over. Christina Papa spoke with one candidate who lost votes, and he's blaming it on low voter turnout. Mistakes have been mended, and the re-votes for Carbon and Schuylkill County are in. There are three people that clinched the Republican and Democratic nominations. Myself, uh, I won a, a Republican nomination, and Carmel Yankevich won the Democratic nomination. The election results for the first primary back in May looked a little different. There was four of us that clinched both the Republican and Democratic nominations. Myself, Clarence John, James Chapman, and Bob Mahalik each scored on both Republican and Democratic tickets. The first primary results were thrown out after something went wrong. Former candidate Steve Hahn's name was left on the ballots in Schuylkill in Carbon County. The final tally hasn't been calculated just yet, but the Republican general election election ballot candidates unofficially are James Chapman, Robert Mahalik, Clarence John, and Jared O'Donnell. Yankavich bumped into the fourth spot for the unofficial Democratic top candidates. Although Yankavich wasn't available for comment today, the board member was an advocate for a fair revote. But was this revote fair? It was always my opinion that you can't correct a wrong with another wrong and expect to make it right. And I think that's what happened in this case. Many folks didn't turn out for the second vote. That's why Republican winner Jared O'Donnell wishes the error could have been handled differently. Out of 1,900 people that voted in the May primary, we only, I mean, the turnout was significantly low. You know, people were on vacation. People forgot about it. I talked with a lot of people that, you know, simply said, we didn't know that there was going to be another election. But the fight's not over yet. Yankavage and O'Donnell will possibly go head-to-head -head with the other winners during November's general election. General election, you could vote for a Republican and Democrat. It doesn't matter what party affiliation you are. Independents and uh, third-party voters can now vote for whomever they want. So that, that influence uh, can make a difference as well. Christina Papa, News 13, Schuylkill County. If you were headed to work or any place else along Interstate 81 northbound this morning, chances are you ran straight into a traffic nightmare caused by a double fatal accident, which also involved a trucker from Sugarloaf. State police say that a 58-year-old man from Old Forge and 52-year-old man from Music died in that crash that took place after 2.30 this morning near the Avoca exit. Investigators say Anthony Liza of Old Forge and his passenger Jeffrey Godek were for some reason stopped in the middle of the interstate in their white minivan when a tractor trailer driven driven by 62-year-old Charles Brown of Sugarloaf, slammed into them. The impact sent both vehicles into the grass median. The crash stopped traffic on the interstate till about 10 o'clock this morning. Recovery crews continue their search for a fisherman whose empty boat was found floating on Beltsville Lake. Crews have yet to be able to do a dive search at the lake due to low visibility and lake's depth in some areas. Responders have concentrated on a visual search for the man and even used sonar equipment to try and locate him. The man's empty boat was found running on the water on Monday morning. There were reports that the man went under but never resurfaced. Police haven't identified the missing man. Emergency crews from Lehigh, Northampton, Bucks, Carbon, Luzerne, Schuylkill and Montgomery counties have been involved in that search. Well, Hazleton's Power received its first powerful donation as a nonprofit organization this morning. PPL donated $1,500 to help Hazleton's Power efforts to revitalize the city. The organization recently filed as a nonprofit to get some extra help from area businesses and, and the community. As a nonprofit, Power has the access to funds and financial support they need to reach its goal. Some of that money donated this morning will go toward Power's paint out this Friday. We will be all over the city. We're going to be meeting in front of the Dragonfly Cafe at noon on Friday. Um, we're going to be painting until we run out of paint. Everyone is invited. We need as many people as we can to grab a roller and pitch in. If you can't be there to help physically with, a, you know, painting, um, your donations are always very appreciated. Um, you know, we need as much help as we can get. As you can imagine, Power is always looking for help and support from the community. So if you have some free time this Friday, they'd love to see you at the paint out.
Well, it's almost like Christmas in July at one local school district. It's getting ready for a huge sale on some of its used technology. As Matthew Petrillo tells us, the Pottsville Area School District is holding a computer sale, and it might help you save some big bucks. School is still a little bit more than a month away, but when Pottsville Elementary students return to class in September, they'll be the first to play with some brand new computers. We do a refresh cycle for all our buildings every five to six years. But first, they got to make room for the new computers. So what we do is we take out all the older computers, uh, bring them to one location, and then we sell them at a computer sale here that we hold. The savings are deep. They cut prices about 75% off their original retail price. And you really won't find a better deal than here. This laptop is just gonna cost you 125 bucks. And to get a high powered desktop will just cost you 75. And it includes everything from a monitor, a desktop, a mouse, a keyboard. It also includes XP Professional Operating System, uh, but any other software uh, that you would want installed on them, you would have to install yourself. The last time the district held a computer sale was in 2012, and they managed to sell all of its 250 machines. Now the money goes to the new computers, so it's for a good cause. But the district didn't always sell their old computers. So I understand you guys used to pay to recycle all these machines. Yes, and now we are going to offer the public quality machines at a discounted price. The district is expecting to make more than $50,000 from the sale. And that'll offset the cost of the new equipment. The computer sale will be held July 31st in the cafeteria at the John S. Clark Elementary Center from 5 to 7 o'clock at night. Now there is a limit of two units per customer. So Dockery says you might want to be there a little bit early if you want a better chance of securing one of these. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Pottsville. And still ahead on News 13, one delightful forecast for the next couple of days. We'll tell you about it in News 13 weather. But first, the winner is, they'll take you to the finals of Schuylkill Idol when News 13 continues. Schuylkill County just got its newest idol. The Frackville Mall completed the month-long Schuylkill Idol competition. And as Matthew Petrillo tells us, the winner earned thousands of dollars in cash and prizes. <laughs> The competition among the contestants at Schuylkill Idol this year was the most fierce the judges have seen yet. It takes a special desire to want to do this. First of all, it's the desire and then the courage that they have to muster up to do it and then to be prepared. The singing competition began earlier this month with 17 contestants. By Tuesday night, that number was whittled down to just three. Each contestant tonight had to sing three songs. The first category was the singer's choice. The second had the theme, Summer Soul. And the judges selected the third song. Judges all have musical backgrounds and critique the performers after each song. I like the way you create. And after really singing their hearts out, the contestants waited for the judges to announce Schuylkill County's next idol. <sighs> I'm really excited. I did this two years ago when I was in the top three, and then that pressure of when it's about to happen, what's going to happen, you know? <laughs> I, I, I'm just excited. I'm off the high of just performing, you know? I'm like, super nervous. I really just want to really win this a lot. And finally, the judges made their decision. Our 2013 Schuylkill County Idol 11 is Autumn Mauer. <laughs> <laughs> now this is one contestant whose hard work definitely paid off. She's winning a thousand dollar gift card, a makeover, a photo shoot, and a whole lot more. At the Frackville Mall, Matthew Petrillo, News 13. That looked like so much fun. Congratulations to her. Hey, time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar. What a difference a cold front makes. The showers, thunderstorms all gone, humidity all gone, and we're in for plenty of sunshine and some comfortable summer temperatures. Creative condition tonight is right on for the forecast. It's by Anthony Pelagi, a student at Hazleton Elementary Middle School, and he says it's clear skies and sunny and a high of 75, and he's out shooting some hoops. 
Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton for tonight. Partly cloudy, great sleeping weather, but a low down of 53 degrees. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 73. Overnight low down to 62. And heading to Schuylkill County for tonight, partly cloudy and delightfully cool with a low down to 52 degrees. Then for Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 77. Partly cloudy at night with a low around 57. Well, if you've passed through Freeland, you've probably seen it. It's a small red thing in the center of town filled up with books. Christina Papa found out more about how this little free library came to Freeland. This little bookworm is ready to take a bite out of reading. Once upon a time, a big red balloon. These kiddos were on their way to the park when they stopped by the little free library right in the center of town in Freeland. That these little free libraries are something that you utilize when you, you take a book to it and you um, take one out. Little libraries are set up all around the world and come in different shapes and sizes, but they do have one thing in common. Put one in, and when you find one of interest, if there's something in there for you, you just take it out. You don't have to return it. You can keep it, or you can, you can return it. After hearing about the project last year, librarian Leanne Brogan and her husband Jerry decided to start the project in Freeland so kids could get a chance to read for free. Everybody has books at home that you're finished reading or your children have grown and you just don't know where to go with them. Well, well, take them to a little free library. Seven-year-old Devin Moore was on the hunt for a book of his own today. That big one. Why would you read that one? Well, because it has a lot of words and it would make you definitely really smart. Um, when children have children's books and it's so, uh, they're so excited and they're so eager to learn that you want to try and keep that with them. This may be called the Little Free Library, but this project is growing by the day and that's why Leanne and her husband are looking to the community for help. If they win, they get a new free little library or money to get books for the community. And if you would just go out there and put a vote or it's a it's a share or it's a like uh, or pin or repin. So if you go on those websites and vote for us, that maybe we'd have a better chance to win. If you'd like to help the Brogans, you can find their video on our website, ssptv.com. Christina Papa, News 13, Freeland. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you play the daily 043 Big Four 3177 Quinto 96619 and the Treasure Hunt 520242629. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy birthday to Colleen Boyle. This which comes with love from your family and friends. Also tonight, happy birthday, Tony Farnell. This which comes from your family and friends. Tonight's Talk of the Town report in Esquibet State Park will be holding a program Wednesday, July 31st called Kayaking Level 1. It will be held at 11 a.m. This program is for ages 16 and up. It's free and registration is required. For more information, please call 570-403-2006. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Shirley Mass Strain of Hazleton. Services will be held Thursday at 11.30 a.m. at the Mount Laurel Memorial Park. Friends may call Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. at the Rosenstock Funeral Home. Irene Hupsky of Allentown. Mass is Saturday at 10.30 a.m. in the St. Thomas More Church. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Robert C. Weir Funeral Home. John Mazur of Barnesville. Mass is Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Blessed Teresa of Calcutta Parish. The Louis D. Troskowski Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. And Leo Tribal of West Hazleton. Mass is Friday at 9.30 a.m. at the Holy Name of Jesus Parish at the Transfiguration Church. Friends may call at their church from 8.30 to 9.30. Arrangements are under the direction of the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Doves of White, serving Schuylkill and surrounding counties, call 570-205-1597. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, traditionally, the month of July, locally, you talk a lot about Little League Baseball. And as the month is coming to a close, well, so too are the tournaments. And unfortunately for the Valley 10- and 11-year-old, the end of the road came yesterday. As you take a look, 
They get upended by Council Rock Northampton. See the score there, 7-5. So pretty good ball game, anybody's game really, but uh, Valley on the short end of it. So that Council Rock Northampton club actually won two of the three meetings. So I guess you could say, deservingly, they will advance on. But you know what? Whenever your uh, Little League season is winding up in the last week of the month of July, you know you had a pretty good year at Valley West team. District 18 champs and uh, won a couple of games in sectionals before being knocked out, so uh, nothing to hang the heads about there. Some great memories in Little League baseball, but uh, that puts it to a close locally. Now we'll all get ready for uh, when they head out to Williamsport in another couple of weeks, right? Anyhow, minor league baseball, Russ Kanzler and his mates uh, got shut down last night. Kanzler, he was uh, 0 for 3. His Indianapolis club got thumped by Charlotte 9 to 2. Meanwhile, the Rail Riders, well, they not only lost once, they lost twice. They get upended by the Mud Hens, 4-1, 3-1. So uh, not the way you wanted things to go if you still were making that playoff push. Anyhow, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs still right in the thick of things. 8-1 winners over Rochester last night. Take a look. Cesar Hernandez quietly putting together a very impressive run. As you see, that average of very healthy 3-10. And last night, he added two more hits. There's the schedule in the International League as you take a look. And that includes both uh, the Rail Riders being home and the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs on the road. So uh, see if scranton Wilkesburg gets it going. Let's talk about Major League Baseball where the Rays were finally cooled off. But uh, tell you, <laughs> tight game going right to the last inning. But they'll try it again tonight at Fenway Park. The Yankees, oh man, they actually rallied for a ninth inning come from behind win. They'll try it in Texas tonight. Pittsburgh in Washington, Atlanta in the Mets, Phillies and the St. Louis Cardinals. And as we're talking Major League Baseball, well, let's take a look at uh, who's hot in the big leagues. We said Tampa Bay, well, they are now a game and a half behind the Red Sox, but they are uh, clearly the team with the uh, hottest streak going right now. But don't forget the Orioles. You know, this division just may end up having the winner and both wild card winners. I you know we still got two months to go, but it's looking that way. Seattle, they're a little, a little bit on fire, although uh, they've needed it because they're still well below the 500 mark. The Dodgers are starting to play like everybody said they would. And the St. Louis Cardinals, well, they're the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, you want to uh, turn the thermostat down a little bit? There you go. No surprise. It includes Houston and uh, the LA Angels. While the Dodgers are doing it, the Angels are not. Texas, Washington, Toronto also. Frigid right now. Toronto has probably played themselves out of any playoff possibility, as you see. They are now nine games below the 500 mark, so uh, I think that five-team race in the East has turned into a four-team one. And here's what our media partner, the Standard Speaker, is working on for tomorrow's edition. Local brick-and-mortar Bank of America facilities are changing hands. What will this mean for customers? You can read all about it in the Thursday edition of the Standard Speaker. And plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13, the latest on the special election which had to be held for folks in parts of the Hazleton School District. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back.